modern civilization has gone downwards, step by step, until it has ended by sinking to the level of the lowest elements in man, and aiming at little more than satisfaction of the needs inherent in the material side of his nature, an aim which is in any case quite illusory, as it constantly creates more artificial needs than it can satisfy. Individualism necessarily implies the refusal to admit of any authority higher than the individual, as well of any means knowledge higher than individual reason. And these two attitudes are inseparable. Consequently, the modern outlook was bound to reject all spiritual authority in the true sense of the word, authority that is, which is based on the superhuman, and all traditional organization, that is to say all organization based essentially on this authority, whatever form it may assume. Nothing and nobody is any longer in the right place. Men no longer recognize any effective authority in the spiritual order or any legitimate power in the temporal. The profane presume to discuss what is sacred and to contest its character and even its existence. The inferior judges the superior. Ignorance sets bounds to wisdom. Error prevails over truth. The human supersedes the divine. Earth overtops heaven. The individual sets the measure for all things and claims to dictate to the universe laws drawn entirely from his own relative and fallible reason. The most decisive argument against democracy can be summed up in a few words. The higher cannot emanate from the lower, because the greater cannot come out of the less. This is an absolute mathematical certainty that nothing can gainsay. It is abundantly clear that the people cannot confer a power that they themselves do not possess. True power can only come from above, and this is why it can be legitimized only by the sanction of something which stands above the social order, that is to say, by a spiritual authority. Otherwise, it is a mere counterfeit of power, unjustifiable to the lack of any principle and in which there can be nothing but disorder and confusion. This reversal of the true hierarchical order begins when the temporal power seeks to make itself independent of the spiritual authority, and then even to subordinate the latter by claiming to make it serve political ends. The great ability of those who are in control in the modern world lies in making the people believe that they are governing themselves. And the people are the more inclined to believe this as they are flattered by it. And as they are in any case incapable of sufficient reflection to see its impossibility. It was to create this illusion that quote-unquote universal suffrage was invented. The law is supposed to be made by the opinion of the majority, but what is overlooked is that this opinion is something that can be very easily guided and modified. It is always possible, by means of suitable suggestions, to arouse in it currents moving in this or that direction as desired. This mental outlook is one that consists in more or less consciously putting material things and their preoccupations 
arising out of them in the first place. Whether these preoccupations still make some show of being speculative or are purely practical, and it cannot be seriously disputed that this is in fact the mental outlook of the immense majority of our contemporaries. It seems that nothing exists for modern man beyond what can be seen and touched, or at least even if they admit theoretically that something more may exist, they immediately declare it not merely unknown but unknowable, which absolves them from having to think about it. The moderns, in general, cannot conceive of any other science than that of things that can be measured, counted, and weighed, which really comes to the same as saying material things, since it is to these only that the quantitative point of view can be applied. And the claim to reduce quality to quantity is very typical of modern science. This tendency has reached the point of supposing that there can be no science in the real meaning of the word, except where it is possible to introduce measurement, and that there can be no scientific laws except those that express quantitative relations. What the modern world has striven after with all its power, even when it has claimed in its own way to pursue science, is really nothing else than the development of industry and machinery, and in thus seeking to dominate matter and bend it to their service, men have only succeeded in becoming its slaves. Not only have they limited their intellectual ambition to inventing and constructing machines, but they have ended by becoming, in actual fact, machines themselves. Indeed, it is not only scholars, but also technicians and even laborers who have to undergo the specialization which certain sociologists praise so highly under the name of division of labor. And for these last, it makes intelligent work impossible, very different from the artisans of former days. They have become mere slaves of machines, with which they may be said to form part of a single body. In a purely mechanical way, they have constantly to repeat certain definite movements, which are always the same and always perform in the same way, so as to avoid slightest loss of time. Such at least is required by the American methods, which are supposed to represent the most advanced stage of progress. Indeed, the object is merely to produce as much as possible. Quality matters little, it is quantity only that is of importance. Modern civilization may really be called a quantitative civilization, and this is only another way of saying it is material civilization. The inventions whose number is at present growing at an ever-increasing rate are all the more dangerous in that they bring into play forces whose real nature is quite unknown to the men who utilize them. And this ignorance is the best proof of the worthlessness of modern science as an explanatory means. The danger inherent in these inventions, even in those that are not expressly created for a purpose destructive to mankind, but which nonetheless cause just many catastrophes, without mentioning the unsuspected disturbances 
that they create in the physical environment, this danger, we say, will undoubtedly continue to grow, and that to an extent difficult to foretell, so that, as we have already shown, it is by no means improbable that it will be through these inventions that the modern world will bring about its own destruction, unless it can check its course in this direction while there is still time.